Hello everyone and welcome back once again to another Flight Sim video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a mod, in this case the F-22A Raptor, and this is a freeware mod, per usual with the channel. We do some payware stuff, but I like to show the cool free stuff that's out there. Not the hot garbage, but the cool free stuff. Um, Searcraft only comes in two libraries. Um, the Standard paint that we have here in the weathered and uh, most F-22s, as far as the ones I've seen, don't really have much weathering on them. And they're pretty well taken care of airplanes. They're somewhere in the couple hundred of millions of dollars, I think, each. So, pretty well taken care of. But anyway, we are at, I believe, Ellendorf Air Force Base in Alaska. Hence our tail marking there with the AK. And uh, we're going to take this up for a quick flight, see some of the flight characteristics, look at some of the ground handling, startup procedure, obviously. And uh, that'll be it. So probably a pretty quick, pretty short video, but uh, nonetheless, we'll uh, take a look. I've given you a few good angles of the outside of the Raptor. It looks fairly good for the most part. I think the rear end, the engine uh, exhaust... Looks a little bit narrow. I don't know what this bronzing is up here. The real F-22 does not have that. And there's a weird aspect ratio when you look at the airplane from... Uh, it's kind of like this angle here. And I think part of that is the rear landing gear doors look a little bit off. Also, the front landing gear doors on the real F-22 just sit out when... Uh, the aircraft has its nose wheel out, so they they don't close back in like that. They're out, nose wheel comes up, and then they shut. But anyway, again, I'm nitpicking. It's a free mod. Go check it out. Let's hop in the cockpit. And we're greeted by, if you saw my F-22 video in DCS, a very familiar sight. Um, I almost want to say that this cockpit looks a little bit better than... The DCS model now it's not nearly as accurately modeled from a operations and flight standpoint as the DCS model but you know it's flight sim what are you gonna do um not fully clickable just like the DCS model so there's a whole bunch of stuff here that is just non-interactable um but there's a few things obviously we've got our battery switch APUs our lights master arm does not work hook doesn't work park brake switch does work these are our generators, those work. APU, I think it went over that works. Our external lighting switches work. Formation lighting switches work. And I think that is about it. Those look like panel lights, console lights. So the stuff we need for flight sim seems to be semi-functional. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn on our master battery. And you'll see what we're greeted with here. So obviously our displays have been filled in with a flight sim kind of stand-in, if you will. So you've got your uh, PFD stuff here. So like if you were setting a GPS or whatever, obviously the real F-22 probably doesn't have a G6000 suite in it. We don't really know what the actual F-22 does have, but uh, I would imagine it's uh, not this. So anyway. Let's go ahead and start up our APU. And as far as I know, that doesn't have a sound to it. Oh, I stand corrected. You can hear a little, little bit of whooshing in the background. And you can hear from the outside too. That sounds like the 787, uh... Yeah, it sounds like the 787 APU. Real APU on the F-22, you have your, I believe this is the exhaust here, or no, this is the intake, and I think it exhausts somewhere here. It's on this side of the airplane, or maybe I'm thinking the F-16. Anyway, I know this door opens vertically. Maybe this is the exhaust and there's an intake door here, that would make more sense. Anyways, uh, neither one is modeled, so I don't know why I'm worrying about it. We're missing our AAR doors here as well. Okay, so we've got our external lighting, everyone knowing, hey, we're getting ready to start up. Uh, that is realistically modeled, so on the F-22 you actually have, and I went over this in the DCS video as well, um, you have obviously your navigation light positions, but in addition to that, there's no beacons on the tail fins. 
your beacons are in the wingtips. So you can see my right hand side, my starboard side has a green navigation light, but it's also blinking red. And my port side has a steady red light with a blinking red as well. And I can switch to just anti-collision. And then it's just blinking red on both wingtips. And I can switch to flashing navigation. It's interesting, those almost look like white strobe lights. No, that's red. And that is green, and then you can have them steady. Like so. But we're going to go back to anti-collision. And we'll turn on the formation lights too, so you can see what those look like. Pretty straightforward. Nothing too fancy. Cool modeling in FSX, FSX, and uh, flight sim though. Okay, so the engine start procedure, we're going to come over to this panel here. You can customize any of these to be any page you want, so if I want engines over here, I can have that there, but, you know, we'll... Actually, I want traffic on. So, engine starting, we're going to go to engine control, we're going to select engine 1, and then we already have our fuel valve open, as you can see. I'm going to turn on ignition and our starter, and you'll see rotation start here. I was actually watching Jeff Faviano's video on this this morning, and it seems like, I don't know if it's just a newer version that I have, but he was only getting indication on his number one engine, so I don't know if it just didn't start for him, or if that was just a bug in that version, but you'll see in a minute here, you do get indication on both engines. We'll actually head outside. It's an automated process. Let's see if we can see rotation there it doesn't look like it it's probably just a static object oh no it's stationary there's a little bit of jet exhaust or a heat blur that you'll be able to see maybe once we're underway you can't really see it right now no. sound model is pretty good I'll give them that this is fairly accurate to the F-22, I think this sounds a little bit more like the F-35. I've heard both of them in several different occasions. Uh, but this, you know, I'll give them, you know, a pass on the sound model. I think it sounds very, very good, very realistic, you know. They could have made this sound like a citation or something like that. Anyway, so we've got a successful startup of Engine 1. We're going to go back. We're going to go to Engine 2. Same thing. Ignition and starter on. And I guess we'll watch it from the inside this time. Good N2 rotation, 20%. We should see RTT start to rise in a second here once fuel kicks in. I think it's 25. Nope, there it goes. RTT is now in. We should see N1 rotation in a minute here as we come through 30%, I believe. There we go. So there's 30%, 2% on the N1. And so on and so forth. So you can see we have... I don't even know what this is out of. This must be out of the... I, I, I don't know what this is out of Airbus, maybe. Um, but you see we have a control systems telling us where our flaps and speed brakes are. So if I come outside and I dump the speed brakes, you can see our two rudder planes come in. That's fairly realistic on the actual F-22. You would also get upward deflection of the uh, aileron as well, something sort of like that. But again, you know, it's a freeway airplane, so I'll give them credit where credit's due. Uh, one other thing you'll notice, so on the actual F-22, the thrust factoring, both of the nozzles move, the upper and lower nozzle moves together, whereas on the mod here, if I pull back on the stick, only the upper nozzle is going to move. And if I push down on the stick, only the lower nozzle moves. So that's one inaccuracy, but again, you know, we're not here to nitpick. 
at the end of the day, this is a great free mod. So, all right, enough dealy dallying around. Let's go ahead and turn on our gens, turn off our APU, turn on our taxi light, release our parking brake. We'll power out of here. Brakes off, and I have noticed it does take a lot of power to get the F22 rolling, but once it's rolling, you're pretty good to go. So let's power out here. Just take a listen. Cut this lady in half real quick. There we go. Slice the Reno. Burn up the fuel truck. Or the uh, ground ground power truck. nav lights and beacon are on and then we have our landing lights set on most of strobes. As far as I know the F-22 doesn't have strobes and I might be confusing this with the F-35. I am confusing it with the F-35. The F-35 has rear facing white lights on its uh, nav lights but it also has individual strobes on the wingtips. It also has uh, the red beacons on the wingtips. As far as I know, the F-22 only has your nav lights on the wingtips and your anti-collision lights. Again, could be mistaken. We know very, very, very little about this aircraft as it sets the being a 5th gen fighter. Uh, there is a HUD brightness adjustment. You can see me fiddling with that. active here. One more thing I'll show you. So these screens here do have their own individual brightness settings you can adjust. Um, which is, it's really interesting to me. So you have you know, aircraft that are, that came out with a sim that don't have the ability to adjust these screens. And a freeware mod does. Just, just, just food for thought. So let's do a uh, takeoff from the outside here. Unfortunately, there is no um, afterburner modeled with this being flight sim. So we're going to go up to about 70% power. Then we will release brakes and go 100%. is uh, not quite as deafening. Still kind of loud, but... Alright, pulling through the vertical. There's 20,000 like no one's business. As far as I can tell, there is no real thrust vectoring modeled, unfortunately. But, you know... You're running off of a basic flight sim model, so what do you what do you really expect, I suppose? I mean, it looks good. Oh, where did where did I go? Hello. There we go. Oh, little sound glitch right there. Did you come across the canopy? I think it goes back to your in cockpit sound right there. I mean, it definitely looks good. It gets a little bit shiny. Yeah, it's a little bit shiny, but that does help bring out the 
um, matte surfaces. It's a fun jet to fly. And I mean, as far as flight sims, you know, handling, there's not really... I know there's some kind of crappy, in my opinion, third-party payware airplanes out there. Um, that are, you know, high-performance military jets. But as far as your normal flight sim experience, you're not really going to get a whole lot of higher-performance airplanes like the F-22. So I think it did pretty good with the model that it was given. Well, I get back up to 20k here. We'll see if uh, we can successfully pass the sound barrier, although we're already almost at uh, 0 0.9 Mach, so I would imagine so. I don't think I've actually ever been past 0 0.9 Mach in uh, flight simulator. Yeah, we're actually about to break the sound barrier at a, like, 60-something degree angle. Converted. Keep pulling, keep pulling. There's 30,000. Okay, there's Mach 1. If I go outside, if this were DCS, we would have no sound. But you know, it's alright. Let's see, we're pumping out a contrail now. Oh, it actually looks really good with this light. Mach 1.3. Let's get turned around here. I don't want to stray too far from our destination airport. Mach 1.4. Still accelerating if you look at our bottom display. Holy smokes. Can't see our HUD. Still accelerating. Mach 1.6. I don't know what the max Mach is of the F-22. I think it's like Mach 2.1 or something like that. 1.7. There's our V&E, so we're going to back off here, 1.8. Zoom it out. I think that's Anchorage over there. Oh, we're flying. All right, dump the speed brakes below Mach 1, please. Thank you. So yeah, if you uh, want a new hot rod to get around in flight sim, this would be the one. We did burn a whole crap ton of fuel though there in doing that. Oh, there's the classic flight sim freeze that everyone knows and loves on this channel. Alright, let's try and approach... Fairly certain this is Anchorage. P A E D. I honestly couldn't tell you. Right, there's one nine or zero. I'll drop the gear. Add some flaps. Flaps. Now, I have no technical data on the F-22. I would imagine that your touchdown speed is going to be similar to like an F-16 or an F-18, so around 180 knots. We're a little bit below that, but we're coming onto a shorter runway too, so... Let's do a quick touch and go. There's the touch, and here we go. 
Didn't even really settle. Let's suck in those gear. Rocket ship, man. sure where our original airport went, but, uh, unless it's no factor. Maybe this is it? I would doubt. No, it's not. I, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. We almost hit Mach 2, so. Let's do a missed approach here. interesting certain things you uh kind of miss is uh, so DCS gives you very audible audible feedback on how your approach is going or I'm sorry no audible feedback on how your air brake status is it's right there I was flying with the air brakes out I had no idea so DCS gives you like a air rumbling sound when your uh, speed brakes are out. Whereas with this, you don't really get that. Oh, we're dead. Yeah, well, that's the F-22. Uh, crash, got a little bit too excited. But anyway, that's, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Check it out if you would like. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, take it easy.